Hello and welcome to the show. This is Legends of the Wind and I'm Jury Shank. Thanks for joining us tonight. We're really excited to have you here uh, where we bring a bridge between storytelling and the prophetic. We bring uh, story and mythology and I sorts of creative ideas and kind of do a life coaching uh, way of angle of helping people to strengthen them to encourage them. So thank you so much for being with us tonight. I'm Jerry Shank as I said and uh, I also want to say that this is a special place. This is a special place where people can discover their identity and destinies through the use of storytelling. And these stories that come to me are very much inspired. They're revelatory. Uh, I don't pre-plan them. I, I take a time where I write for a certain person and I get a download. And of course I clean it up and I make sure it's edited and grammar and all that, that good stuff about the language. But it's really about what is in the story? What are the hidden treasures in your story? And that we can discover them and help encourage our lives. And so, what this show is called is Legends of the Wind. And one of the things I like to introduce people about is what is a legend? A legend, uh, you know, you can think about it like, oh, I'm super famous or I'm really wonderful. Uh, but legends have a function. Uh, legends on a map tell you what things are and where you are on a map and where you're going if you have a plan. And so these stories are legends for the people who I write for and for everyone else too. Just because a story is written for an individual person doesn't mean we all can't benefit from them. We do. And these stories give us direction and guidance and they give us an opportunity for revelation and in our who we are and what our life in our future is and so i usually end a story not with the end but with the word inceptio and that means in the latin uh the beginning so i kind of give someone a person uh, or a guest uh, a sense of who they are and what their future is or what their issue is but i give them a point of view to go forward into their future and let them finish their story and so that's how we operate here. So welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Mike. Mike Smith says, hi, Jerry. Uh, it's great to have him as always here as a super fan on the show. Thanks for showing up every episode. It's great. Um, now, tonight's story is in different kind of take. And there's a question I want to bring up regarding this story. And it has to do with um, the question of who are all these people? Okay, and so think about that question when you're listening to me reading your story. Now, 
Our guest is Jenny Wheeler, and she's been so wonderful because she's actually invited her her sibling or her children to be part of the show to receive a story of each of them. And just last broadcast, her son uh, Nick was on the show, and I gave him a story that really spoke to his identity and destiny in a unique way, kind of like a Indiana Jones adventure. And it, uh, he had a nice encounter in a special place of this treasure of a temple. And he spoke and met with his future self. And that future self was in his 60s. And basically, it allowed him to hear from his future that he was going to turn out and be just fine. Now, now Nick is 18 years old at this time. And so uh, he needed that strength and encouragement to basically believe in himself and to know that we believe in him as well. So Lisa is on the chat. She says, I will grab my popcorn. That's a wonderful comment. So, so our story with Nick was very special. And today his mother, uh, Jenny will be on the show. Now, if you want your own story, if you want to order a story and have one for yourself, you don't have to be on the show if you don't really want to, but we do like to have you on the show if possible. That way it's an interactive experience with the chat. It's spontaneous. It's really powerful that way. So if you do want to get a story, go to legendsthewind.com, go to our product page and look for Become a Legend. At this time, we're still doing a 60% off sale. Typically, these stories will be $250. At this time, we're selling it for $99. And that goes into our time and talent into creating these portraits of a story for you. So they're meant to be able to be a description of who you are in a story form. This isn't church. This isn't a prayer ministry time. This is a creative work. And uh, it's just so you know that if you do order a story, there are a couple agreements that we have. One is a release to be on the show if you want to be on the podcast. The other is simply a contract where we get to publish your story and we handle other things. They're basically standard forms. Um, now, if you want to order a book, uh, illustration. My wife just recently finished this one for our friend Robbie Little. Uh, this is Robbie's story and Alicia and my wife did a, an illustration of the cover and it's amazing. It feels so good in your hands and her artwork is so inspiring and so we sent this off to Robbie last week and she received it and she basically it's a keepsake for her story and it has other information in the book as well and a little bit of journaling and if you want to uh, read our uh, previous stories we have volume one which is on amazon.com also uh, on our website legendsthewind.com and this contains 20 prophetic stories that I've written for children and adults this is the beginning place of all these stories and I tell you uh, these are amazing revelations and amazing experiences for you to have in these uh, storytelling uh, experiences. So I highly encourage you to get that. Um, now, we'd like to welcome our guest, uh, Jenny Wheeler, to the show. So Jenny, I'm going to bring you on board. So hold on a second. Hey, Jenny, how are you? Hi, I'm good. Cool. Happy Thank you. Yes, yes, great. Thank you so much. And I'm so excited about you involving your children to receive a story. Now, Nick has already received one last broadcast, and now you're on. Um, so tell me, as a mother, and what we're doing here at Legends of Win, and you've seen Nick's show, uh, you've seen it a couple times, right? So what has your experience been uh, seeing what we do and how Nick is doing? Well, what you shared in his story was like spot on for what he had struggled with his whole life and just not seeing his self-worth and his self-value and being confident and like knowing who he is um and so that i mean it really just was life-changing for him and when i heard about the stories i thought why not invest in my kids' future and give them a a platform to push off of for their life. If they could get a nugget now mm -hmm. to help direct their future, how valuable that would be. And I w wished I would have had something like that. Wow. So to me, it was, it was a no brainer. Like, yeah, my kids need something like this. Well, great. So, 
And thank you for trusting me to do that for you and your family and for being an advocate for your children. That's wonderful. I'm, I'm really impressed by your heart to do that for people. So, so how did you find out about Legends of the Wind? And what was, uh, when, you, when you made that decision to order a story, like what else went into that uh, idea? Um, I saw Bray, Bray and, uh, how do you say his last name? Wyckoff, I believe. Yeah, Wyckoff. Mm -hmm. I saw his story. So I, that was my first, uh, I didn't even know this was a thing. I'm like, where has this been all my life? This is so <laughs> cool. Um, and I just thought how powerful that was. And like, I want something like that. You know, I have a prophetic gift, so I really value prophetic things and thought I could really use some encouragement or just a, a little direction or something and, and my kids too and and valuing the gifts of other people and so i wanted to take the opportunity well thank you i'm glad that we can do that for you you know i'm glad that uh you've seen other people experience this as well and that gives you and everyone else the confidence that um, this is a real deal. You know, we are pioneering kind of a thing here. You know, no one that we don't know of anybody else out there that is using the prophetic with storytelling. Typically, prophetic voices out on the internet are dealing with political elements or national elements. And, and this is a different take. It's kind of a unique thing. And, you know, I, I learned about what I do from a previous prophetic voice that passed away some years ago, Kim Clement. I would go to his meetings every time I could, and I saw him taking huge risks with the prophetic and, and really honing in with the people he ministered to. He'd do it to an individual, to a family, or to a nation, or to a president. It did not matter. Yeah. And I watched him over and over do it, and I really, I, I, I grabbed hold of his mantle, if you know what I say, but in my own way. Like, Kim had a sound, I have a sight and a sound, and um, so I learned from his modeling, and I was inspired greatly um, yeah. by what his example produced. So, uh, so your story is titled "Victorious," and I, I, I've been helping people who watch the show or people who are guests that these stories are not meant to be taken literally, even though they may have a literal feeling to them, depending on the story. But, Jenny, what I want you to do is understand this story symbolically. And that this story is a revelation. And our conversation afterward is an interpretation. We get to unpack it for ourselves. We get to learn from each other and also hear God's heart and about how that works with the story speaking for you. And mm -hmm. there may or may not be things in the story that really hit home that are like that spot on. And then again, there may not be. And then after our interpretation exploration, we get to learn how will you apply this revelation? What will you do with it? Now, you do have an option, uh, a choice with these stories. You can say, yes, I accept this story completely or partially or no, not at all. I do not accept this story. And also, you may need time to process. You know, these stories contain a lot of things in it. You as a guest are going to hear this story live for the first time. And uh, you will need a time of regrouping when I finish reading, okay? And I'm going to walk you through that so I understand what your experience is, okay? And then, of course, we have people in the chat who can bring in their questions and comments to speak to you or I. So we welcome that as well. So... Um, let me just pull up your story. Do you know what time it is, Jenny? Uh, story time. It's story time. <laughs> Great. Well, hold on. Let me check something because I have an alarm that might go off, and I want to stop that. Hold on a second. There we go. Okay, cool. All right, Jenny. Your story is called Victorious. Road trips were always fun for Jenny and the kids, but this time she was going alone. The journey through the mountainous road unnerved her because of all the twists and turns. Driving uphill and downhill made her stomach sick. The downpouring rain didn't help either. At first it was a slight drizzle, but now her windshield wipers were on their fastest setting. Jenny had little time either. Her sick child was in another town visiting a friend for a birthday. Jenny had the medication at home, and the child forgot to bring it. The illness wasn't something contagious. The medicine helped the child to keep healthy. 
Jenny was reluctant to let her child go on the trip, but it was a milestone sweet 16 birthday party. All of her friends wanted to go camping at the lake on the other side of the mountain range. There were many fun things for, to, to do, such as water skiing, floating, fishing, etc. But the biggest thing they were all excited about was the s'mores at the campground fire and their ghost stories were always super surprising. The rain continued falling as Jenny's SUV plowed its way up the pass. As soon as she reached the top, she would make her way down. The cold front seemed to only impact the higher mountain range. The lake with the kids was on the edge of the weather system. Jenny's vehicle had plenty of gas and she knew there was enough power to get through the storm. The problem was time. She needs to get the medicine to her child fast. Otherwise, the hospital might be the next stop. Just as Jenny drove up through the rain and reached the top of the pass, a large man walked out onto the road in front of her. Jenny grabbed the steering wheel and turned hard to miss the man. She blared her horn and screamed at the same time. When she looked in her rear view mirror, she saw that the man was lying on the ground, motionless. Oh no, cried out Jenny. She knew her vehicle never struck the man. Jenny wondered why this man was way out in the mountains and had crossed the road just when she arrived. Jenny slammed the brakes, looked, and turned the vehicle around to drive to the man on the road. The vehicle pulled up and Jenny opened her driver's door. She ran to the man on the ground. Hey, are you okay? Do you need me to take you to the hospital? The man groaned and turned his head toward Jenny and said, you forgot to breathe. Jenny gave a confused look and asked, what do you mean, breathe? When you left your house with the medicine, you held your breath in fear for your child. You forgot to breathe. Jenny knelt over the man in her rain jacket as the water dripped down. She moved closer to the man and asked, how do you know this? Your daughter will be fine, Jenny. Your children will be fine. You will come out on the other side. The man coughed and groaned in pain. He turned to lie on the side and picked himself, he picked himself to sit straight. Jenny held his shoulder to steady him. The man's words bewildered her and she asked, How do you know about my family? How can you possibly know these things? I think I need to call the police. Jenny reached for her cell phone and saw she did not have any signal or service. The man looked Jenny straight in the eyes and said, I'm sorry for all the pain I caused you, Jenny. I'm sorry for everything. Lightning flashed and thunder boomed all around them. The sudden interruption frightened Jenny, and she worked to regain her wits. Jenny looked at the man and tried to recognize him. Countless flashes of images crossed her mind. People, men, events, and other ideas flooded her. All Jenny knew was she had to get the medicine to her child, and yet this man appeared on her road. The man reached into his pocket, pulled out an envelope, and placed it in her hand. He said, You need to go. Don't worry about me. Take this, but don't open it until you get home. Promise me you'll do this, okay? Jenny took the envelope and looked at it. She asked, What is this for? When you get home, open it. Go, Jenny. I'll be fine. The man climbed into his feet and stood. They all looked at each other. The man was in pain but had some strength. Jenny knew she needed to leave, but what about this man of mystery? The man pointed to her vehicle and said, Go, Jenny. Jenny looked back and forth and returned to her vehicle. When she looked back, the man disappeared into the forest on the side of the road. Jenny climbed in and returned to driving. As Jenny made her way down the mountain and navigated the switchbacks, the experience with the man in the rain would not leave her mind. Jenny remembered his face and thought she knew him, was this a strange coincidence, or was there something here that was magical or mystical? Was the man an angel, or was he an enemy? Jenny hurried her SUV to the campground and saw all the teachers surrounding teenagers surrounding a picnic table with Jenny's child laying on it. They all smiled to see Jenny. We gave her some water. She's been in the sun too much, said one friend. Jenny pulled out a bottle of liquid medication and a measuring cap and administered the dosage. Jenny's daughter was bleary-eyed and swallowed the medicine. With a few remaining drips, Jenny completed the task. Her daughter was looking a little better. Bring her to a chair in the shade, said Jenny. All the friends helped the sick child over and they sat her down. One teenager produced a water bottle and had her drink it. 
After a few minutes, the color returned to Jenny's daughter's face. Jenny felt great relief and assessed the situation. She asked herself, should she take her daughter home or leave her behind? The mother saw all the fun they were having and how important this trip was to her daughter. Jenny stuck around and see, to see how she felt. The afternoon light faded and it was dinner time. Jenny's daughter was up and moving around, looking much, much better. She even laughed and played with her friends and their dogs. Jenny smiled to see this progress. They all cooked hamburgers on the grill and then pulled out the marshmallows, chocolate, and graham crackers. It was story time. Each of the teenagers took turns trying to scare each other uh, with wild, crazy tales of goose, ghosts, spooks, and other creatures. Everyone laughed and cried out scared. Jenny then realized she had a ghost story to tell, too. She realized the experience of the mountain pass in the thick rain was just as scary or more than what these kids were telling. Jenny was about to open her mouth, but then hesitated to share. Maybe it wasn't real. Maybe it didn't really happen. Could it be a figment of her imagination? Jenny didn't know. The kids were done for the evening, and Jenny saw her daughter was completely well. She decided to let her stay with her friends and left behind the medicine. There were no other sleeping bags or tents available, and Jenny said that she couldn't spend the night. The drive home, the drive home back over the mountain pass would only take two or three hours. Jenny's daughter pleaded her to stay, but Jenny insisted that she would be fine. The storm had passed. Have fun. Don't get sick again. See you in a couple days, okay? Her daughter smiled and let mom go. The return drive home was quiet and full of the moon's light that shined down on the forest road. Jenny put on some soothing classical music in the vehicle's stereo system. All was well. Jenny arrived home and pulled out her rain jacket from the back of the SUV. She noticed the white envelope the man gave her on the road. This rediscovery alarmed Jenny. It wasn't a dream after all. Jenny remembered the man who made her promise to not open it until she came home. Jenny pulled out her house key, opened the door, and entered. She sat down and opened the envelope and read the letter. As she read it, the document told her a message of reconciliation and explained the pain she went through, all the drama and discouragement, all the pain and hatred, all the rage and God's honest truth. It was a letter from her heart to her heart. It was a story of awareness. It was coming to your senses and getting real. Many tears dripped down Jenny's face from reading this story. It was finally time for her to face her grief and trials and the toll they took on her heart. The letter ended with a promise and said, I am always with you. Let me take your ashes and give you beauty. The season has passed and now enter into your sunshine. Let us walk together, your friend. Jenny released her pain and grief that night in the early morning hours. As she slept, the memories of good days filled her mind, and she remembered to be kind to herself again. Inceptio. I see you're taking notes. <laughs> wow. How does this how does this hit you, Jenny? How's this working for you? Is it, does it work for you? Oh yeah, definitely. Okay. okay. Um, it's like, where do you start? <laughs> Wherever um, you want. <laughs> um, it's funny cause my daughter, she's going to be 16. <laughs> so, oh really? Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the sweet 16 thing, that was funny. And, um, yeah, they went to camp up in the mountains this summer, and it's two to three, you know, a couple hours away. And there is twists and turns, and they <laughs> freak me out. They literally make me anxious anytime I have Okay. To. Um, so I, I thought that was funny that it's very, very accurate. Um, I don't necessarily know who, who the guy is in the raincoat, but... Right. Um. I lost my dad a, a couple days before Christmas. Really? On the, yeah, on the freeway. And um, um, I just thought of, of dad, you know. He was a, uh, a believer in mm. um, 
anyway, um, you know, God, I don't know. He can use anybody to speak to us, but, um, how was your relationship with your dad? We didn't see him a lot cause he worked so much mm -hmm. and, um, he tried to protect us a couple times from stuff going on at home. Okay. But it made it worse. Mm -hmm. So he, he kind of isolated himself because he saw his mom be abused by her, his step, his stepdad. So he would just run. And so when he saw my sister and I be abused, he isolated himself mm -hmm. um, from the situation. I always knew that he loved us, but I didn't have that relationship that I always wanted, you know, um, from a father figure. Mm, I see. Um, my favorite memory was uh, him praying, just hearing him pray every morning. Um, yeah, so it wasn't, there's was a lot of pain, a lot of in my childhood. So, um, like the letter to myself. Yes. Um, I actually found a picture of myself when I was in kindergarten recently mm -hmm. and I left it out and I told that little girl, like, it's okay. Um, you know, um, you, you, I don't like, I don't have to stay there mm -hmm. anymore. Like, yeah. Giving her permission to heal and be free. Yes. Because um, it's been a long process mm. of, of healing and letting go of things, but it's been hard. So, um, I like the letter in the envelope that was really powerful. And I, cause I kind of feel like sometimes I just get stuck mm -hmm. in the pain because that's all I've known yes. for so long. And then you don't know how to function when you're not in pain. And you don't know what it's like just to be happy and normal. Yes. If that makes sense. I understand. Yeah. So. Well, uh, if you don't mind, I'll chime in here, okay? Mm -hmm. So I asked the question at the beginning of the show, who are all these people? You seem to identify the man in the road in the story to be similar to your father. And I understand he passed away in a car accident. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I want you to know I'm going to be very ginger with you. Okay. And be very careful. I want you to know that. All right. So, so there's the father or the, the man in the road, which we can maybe potentially interpret as your dad. And then there's your daughter in the story who is sick and uh, you are in a mad rush to rescue or help your daughter with a medicine. It's like there's a sickness. It's not a contagious thing. It's something that keeps her healthy. Right. Mm -hmm. So what I'd like to propose to you as a way of looking at this story as an interpretation in a similar way as a dream. A lot of these prophetic stories can be useful and understood by dream language or dream interpretation. Yeah. So I would like to propose that the girl that you're trying to heal and minister to with medicine is yourself. Yeah. It's, it's your little girl. It's little Jenny inside your heart. But the thing is, the rush to help her has been delayed or distracted by the man in the road. And so those are the things that um, affect the journey over the mountain pass. You're going up a mountain pass, trying to get there. You're at the crest, and there he is. After that, you go down, right? You go to downhill. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like as a pinnacle point. It's like the highest. And the mountains are places of governance, and they're obstacles. And at least in this story, it's an obstacle for you. And this obstacle of a mountain has the man in the road as um, someone who's in distress. 
Um, yeah. So I would like to propose that this story speaks to you, Jenny, as mm -hmm. dealing with the wounds of your little girl in your heart related to your, your dad and how that impacts your life. And the fact that this little girl's, you know, she's in her teenager's years. Obviously, there's been something that happened to you growing up throughout a period of time. So I'm saying that this story is a gateway of an opportunity for you to bring healing to your heart. That yeah. this is about a relationship with a man in the road, your father potentially, and therefore allows you to bring the medicine to your little girl. Does this make sense to you now? Yeah. I did not have this understanding before we got on the air or when I wrote the story. When I was writing the story, I was at a loss too about who is this person. And, um, and so, like I said, who are all these people was my question for the show. Mm -hmm. And so I'd like to propose to you that from based on what you were telling me, the man in the road could be your dad. And I will say the girl you're trying to heal is you in your young years. And now you did mention just before we got on the air, there was this story called The Child Within on that broadcast that you watched and that you saw yeah. that there were the times of the soul. And you said that you really, that really spoke to you. Is that correct? Correct. Right. Yeah. So how, how do you feel about what I'm saying here? Um, I think that makes a lot of sense because, um, like, I want to move forward in my journey with in life and, and not be hindered yes. by my past. Um, so, like, in in the other story, um, I forget his name, but like freeing freeing all those different ages. Mm -hmm. um, yes started when I was like six okay. all the way to adulthood. Mm -hmm. So it was like 12 years of abuse by a couple of family members, not my dad. Okay. Um, yeah. That's fine. You, you're, you have a lot that you can be thinking about here. I, I don't want you to fall into the trap of what you have paralysis because of analysis. What's, yeah. ha what's happening here is it, it, this story is allowing certain things to surface to your attention. So you need to go to God and go, okay, now what's the application of this revelation and this interpretation? How do I address this? Um, there's a gentleman that I have a lot of respect for uh, who is deals with the physical and emotional healing ministry. He also deals with political news analysis. His name is Praying Medic. Or a guy, his, his, that's his pen name. Uh, he's also known as, his name is Dave Hayes. Uh, and he has a, a very small book uh, on, that you can get on Amazon called Simple Easy Steps for Emotional Healing. And what he did is he took a lot of research from all these different ministries and different ways of bringing healing. And he had to distill it down so that he could basically help people in the ambulance in 15 to 20 minutes and bring yeah. some sort of help to them. I highly recommend that you buy that. It's like five bucks for Amazon. And it's something you can do by yourself or with a sort of trusted person. But he lays out a very simple but very effective and practical way to bring healing emotionally uh, to your heart. Uh, so I don't claim to be a therapist. I'm not a therapist. I'm not licensed. I'm only here telling a story and giving a conversation. Does that make sense? That's, that's yeah. my honest disclaimer. And mm -hmm. so, so the thing is, we all these stories, these different stories deal with different things, identity, destiny, and healing. Mm -hmm. And so application is, okay, the story is brought to my attention. I think this is what it means. Now I have the permission to, to get healed, really, for, yeah. you, for you to have a heart restoration. Um, yeah, there's some people in the chat saying... Um, Mike says, great story. Lisa is saying, yes, her inner child with a heart, uh, with a bandage on it. Mike also says, Jenny, Psalms 139, verse 14 says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. That is how God sees you. No matter what anyone has said to you, you are who God says you are. So I hope that 
that really That's encourages cool. you. Mike and Lisa, yeah. thank you for your comments. Please continue to add. Uh, Lisa just said, so true, Mike. Amen. Uh, so I think about that there's a moment where the medicine is given to the little girl. And she has this, and the mom part of you is like, yeah. do, I, do I leave her behind or I take her home? And I think it's so important, Jenny, for rest to come to you. You need to know how to have fun. You need to know how to celebrate yourself. You need to know how to throw a party. Like, I have an idea. What if you were just to throw a party? Was it a birthday? No, no birthday. Was it an anniversary? No anniversary. We're just going to have a party. Why? Why? Because heaven said so. Well, how do you know that, says the religious sounding person. Well, you know what? Heaven's always having a party. Kat Kerr, who's a prophetic voice with pink hair, she always says, always eating cake. <laughs> so I, I want you to know, Jenny, and I said this to other people on the broadcast, you have permission granted. Permission granted, Jenny. Well, what are you granting permission for? Well, you have permission granted for your healing. You have permission granted to go forward into your future with celebration and hope and destiny and for life. You're meant to live. I mean, there, uh, John Eldridge writes in one of his books, uh, he quotes, uh, oh, I wish I remember, I have to look it up, but basically it's some sort of middle-aged mystical saint or some kind. And he says that the glory of God is the heart of a man fully alive. So Jenny, you have permission to have your heart come fully alive. Because when your heart is fully alive, you, you were bringing glory to God. That means that you're operating from your dreams, your desires, your destiny, your passions. And I think it really is important for you to have fun and to lighten the mood. And so, you know, I would just recommend, not me, jury, but say heaven. Heaven says, have a party. What's the party? You know, have a party, have a fun, and and do something celebratory, because you know what? That's kind yeah. of that's worship, but it's not religious, right? right. It's not yeah. like oh, you know, I'm a sinner saved by grace. I'm going to worship you now. No, no, no. This is like he made me. I'm good. He's good. Let's have a good old time, <laughs> and celebrate him and us. See, we we have to understand that. Um, in a good way, we need right. to take our medicine, right? So yeah. Ky my daughter Kylie asked, what does the medicine mean, right? So you heard the phrase, oh, take your medicine. Right. That negatively means you got to own up to what crap you did and you got to take the consequences. That's a negative pot right. out outlook. I'm saying, Jenny, take your medicine and have a good time. <laughs> celebrate, enjoy yourself, enjoy life. And so the father or the man in the road is the thing that got you delayed, right? Yeah. So, 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 so you need to address that and then find time to love yourself. Now, I had one troll when this podcast was going earlier in the summer, and he's like, oh, love yourself. That sounds like self-idolatry. <laughs> Or, you know, he complained that, you know, that it's new age. Well, if you flip his logic on its head, oh, so we're supposed to hate ourselves? No. No. Jenny, you're not supposed to hate yourself anymore. Okay. Jenny, you need to love yourself. And, and so we can't love ourselves from an empty tank. We have to receive first. And so the relationship with your dad and that those areas of wounding have to be addressed. And then you can also receive the father's love for yourself. And when you have that connection, do you follow me? You have that receiving and the impartation of love. Then you can go, I'm loved. I love me. I'm good. I'm not crap. I'm not garbage. I'm not worthless. I'm not a defect. 
those are the messages that I heard growing up, that I was worthless and a defect. And I had to go on my own journey so I can help you on your journey. Does that make sense? Yeah. So Jenny, you're not a defect. You are a priceless treasure. You are valuable. And, you know, I, I, I had this revelation before and I shared on other broadcasts is that the Bible says that, that he is the father of lights and that God is love and God is light. Now, some people in her religious system will say, oh, that's new age. No, this is biblical. God is light. And if he's the father of lights, that means his children are light. And so I want you to know, Jenny, that in your spirit, man, not your flesh body, not your soul only, you are light and you're made in his image and that you are cherished and dearly loved and that you are valuable from heaven's point of view. He created you and invested in making you exactly what he wants you to be. Uh, Mike just texted or commented, Another way that God sees you is that you are somebody. You do matter. You are loved. You are valuable. You are significant and so much more. Think about that. Chew on that. You're going to need to watch this broadcast a couple times in the replay. Uh, crazy Idaho guy. Is that Nick? No, my boyfriend. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> he says, yes, a party. She deserves a party in her honor for all the wonderful things she does for everyone she comes in contact with. That sounds really nice. Yeah. It's a really good compliment. So, so again, you have permission granted to glow and to shine. You have permission granted to believe in yourself because he believes in you more. Mm -hmm. And you know what? We believe in you too. We're not Thank trying you. to be trite. We're not trying to be religious. We're saying, you know what? You're, you're, you're valuable. It's just that comes down to it. And it's like, if you understood the gold inside of you, see, here's the thing. You have have places of trauma and woundedness. When you overcome this mountain pass, remember the storm will pass, Jenny. Yeah. Out of that pressure comes diamonds from the coal and gold that has out of the refinement of your trials. That's the, the end result of the, the dross is surfacing in the refiner's fire and that gets scraped away as you get healed. And what is left? Gold. And one of the things that I read about is that when you have refining gold or silver and you scrape away the, the, the material that doesn't belong, the, the dross, guess what you see in that pot? A mirrored reflection of yourself. Wow. That metal is so hot, it's liquid like a mirror. So you scrape away the crap and you look at it and guess what? You see you. Hmm. And that letter, I think, in the story is very important. It's a letter from you to you. Mm -hmm. So it's so important for you to have a good relationship with yourself. Okay? Yeah. You, you need to be pro like you were very good at emailing me and getting the orders and all the things coordinated with uh, your children and getting the show worked out. You need to be just as proactive with yourself, not fixing yourself, but being a mom to the little Jenny inside of you and taking care of her. OK, so yeah. there's a place in the spiritual realm called your garden. You can use your imagination, get guided by Holy Spirit, and you can see in your own way, it, it, everyone's different, you can see your garden. And there you can go and meet with Jesus or Father or your little Jenny and yeah. be able to spend time hanging out. I don't say the word fellowship because that's too religious <laughs> sounding. But you need to play with her. If you're going to play and have a good time and have this party, I highly recommend you go to your garden and uh, and I'll allow her to have a voice. What would you like, little Jenny, to be at your party? 
What if this party is a celebration of little Jenny? I just thought of that. <laughs> what, what if this party is to celebrate all the times in your soul, all the children in your prison cells of every age? What if you were to celebrate all of them? What if you were to wake them all up and love on them? What if you were to say, I'm having a party for all of me? And that's what it means. All the ages of who you are. And yeah. that, the, the, that you're like, I'm celebrating me today. Does that make sense? Yes, it so does. That's an application to the revelation, right? And right. Of course, go get the Pray and Medic book. He's got other materials online, too. I highly recommend him. Um, check him out. He has a website, prayingmedic.com. Uh, he has other resources, a lot of good stuff from him. Uh, yeah. But I would really want to encourage you with that. Now, I've talked a long time. Talk to me. What's what's going on in your heart? Well, I was thinking like after, you know, I gave my daughter the medicine and it, it being me, that's when she started to feel better and she started enjoying life and having fun and she wasn't upset anymore she wasn't sick anymore right so if i can take my medicine and deal with you know right all that then i i can be free of all of that yes absolutely i want you to uh, so there's a a thing that new agers call visualization visualization is nothing uh anti-god or anti right. it's 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 faith it's what do you see mm -hmm. i want you to spend some time 10 minutes at most sit down in a quiet place and visualize what would you enjoy doing after you get your healing hmm. what would the thing be that you would love to do your bucket list that you would enjoy and desire that you know what if i didn't have that problem i think <laughs> i would do this or that because because the kim clement has a saying it's very famous saying i see you in the future and you look much better there than you look right now okay <laughs> so right. i want you jenny to look into your future and say what do i look like there and then when you bring, when you see that image of the future of you, and let God guide you if you want, bring it back, put it in your heart. So that's me, that's my future. Just like your son experienced with the 60 year old older Nick in the mirror yeah. of his story, mm -hmm. right? So, right? So I want you to say, and see the religious system of the church wants to crush desire they say desire is evil and wrong well no i, I beg to differ god right. gave you desires there yeah. there are things from heaven that you have in your heart about who you are what you want to do those are god-given desires so what are you going to do with them well you need to give yourself permission to pursue them okay and mm -hmm. so get that picture bring it back Put it in your heart and speak to little Jenny. I give you permission granted to shine, to glow and celebrate her. Does that help you at all? Yes, it does. Good. Yes. And so just, use the yeah. visualization. Like, what is your desire saying to you? And, and, and don't, don't edit it. Don't say, ah, oh, I can't do that. You know, give right. yourself the freedom. You need freedom. Yeah. Freedom. <laughs> yeah. So was that a, are you actually asking me what my dreams or desires are? Oh, no. It, it's okay. up to you. I mean, if you want to share what those are now, that's fine. You don't have to. I, I'm only putting it out there because yeah. um, I'm in the flow right now is what I'm trying to tell you. I'm seeing and understanding things as I'm experiencing this broadcast. And so that's how I'm speaking to you. What are you thinking? Um, well, I, I just had a, just remembered me singing 
when I was in kindergarten before all the stuff started happening mm -hmm. and I was confident and mm -hmm. I was happy and I was wearing this white and green checkered dress and um, yeah, I, w I like always wondered who I would be if I wasn't tainted by the pain mm. and so bringing. So I'm just thinking of that, like, okay. How did God intend me to be? Yes. Because okay. he developed habits. Let me jump off, off of that, okay? Mm -hmm. Do you have problems putting on makeup and fancy dresses? Some Yeah, I don't feel pretty. <laughs> so John Eldridge writes that men offer their strength and that women offer their beauty. So I'll, let me take it to another level, Jenny. It is time for you to offer your beauty, your inner beauty and your outer beauty. So God just remember, gave you that memory of being a five-year-old in a green and white checkered dress. I would like to propose that you go buy a dress that you find yourself enjoying in. You feel pretty and beautiful. Go get your hair done, go to the spa, get pampered, wear some makeup that you find that is a fitting for your style. Think about what song you want to sing. Don't get religious. It doesn't have to be a worship song. Yeah. God, God speaks through popular music more often than Christians realize. So think mm -hmm. about, you know, if you were to go out with your boyfriend on a date or a celebration for your party. It doesn't have to be at the same time, this party versus singing. But I want you to have courage. I want you to believe in your beauty, your inner beauty and your outer beauty, where you have the courage to glow and shine, put on an amazing hairdo, an amazing dress, perfume if you wear perfume, and sing that song, whatever that song is, okay? Mm -hmm. Because when you sing that song, that is the resonate, the, the frequency of your heart in a healed place, singing itself. Part of the children in the different ages in the, uh, the prison cells, every child age has a voice. And when you just had that memory about that five-year-old girl, and you said, what would it be like if I wasn't wounded after that happened? Well, that little girl who's five, before all the garbage happened, that little girl has a voice. Not just a singing voice, but it's meant to be heard because she's part of who you are. Yeah. She needs to be heard. So what you need to do is go to her, little five-year-old, Jenny, Go to your garden and ask her, would I look good in this or this? Would, what song shall we sing together? Remember, it's a partnership here, okay? You're partnering with the little selves of you. I hope this makes sense. You will, yeah. need, you will need courage to do this. Mm -hmm. However, if you do do this, if you do take this recommendation, and you shine, you will never forget it. And only for good reasons. Yeah, yeah. It will be such a monumental overcoming mm -hmm. that you can say, it was on this night at this bar, on this song, in this dress, in this hairdo, that <laughs> I shined. It's kind of like going on America's Got Talent. You know what I mean? Right. Oh but it's, it's for you. Yeah. You're loving you. Yeah. And when you have this experience, guess what? There's another saying, if you shine, you give other people permission to shine. Mm -hmm. Does it make sense? So yeah. when you love on yourself and you deal with the father issues and the, the childhood traumas and have a level of breakthrough, you're going to glow. You're, everyone's going to see, wow, she's changed. And then when they see you in that dress, looking like amazing uh, everyone's gonna go wow and you see that's the thing that's glory to god
because your heart has come fully alive. You've come fully alive by doing that. So I've given you huge application here. I've been very practical, very uh, resourceful. And, and so now, what will you do? Apply it. <laughs> Apply it, yes. But it's, it's a choice you have. You, right. can go, you can go, okay, I heard what he had to say. I got my story in the email after the show. I've processed this. I've looked at the broadcast a couple times. Now, I just remembered something from the story. You left the door and you forgot to breathe. Oh. You forgot to that. breathe. So the breath is spirit. The breath is life. It's the most simplest thing to do to breathe. And you don't even notice it until you can't breathe. Right? Right. So, so when you breathe in and out, there is an ease. That's the ultimate promise for you. More than just the healing. You will enter into an ease. A rest of life. And that is the promise awaiting you. That'd be wonderful. Yes. I was actually thinking today, like, I'm just so tired all the time. I'm just tired of um, fighting this battle of, of the pain and, and being a single mom and working full time and raising three teenagers and you know, I'm trying to not drown. <laughs> yes. So. And when you drown, you can't breathe, right? Right. So this is heaven reaching out to you and your whole family. Really. I, I don't take any credit for this other than I was part of the picture. But heaven's reaching out to you guys and saying, yeah. we, heaven loves you. The reason I don't say God and I say heaven is that... <laughs> It's not just God in heaven. There's the angels, the elders, the, the, the creatures, the, the, the Bible characters. There's the people who passed on before us, mm -hmm. the saints, the cloud of witnesses. There's so much more than just God. Now, I'm not diminishing him at all. He knows that. Uh, right. But heaven celebrates you, Jenny. Heaven wants to have that party just as badly as what you're thinking about, you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> so, 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 so you're, you're, you're meant to be celebrated. Uh, Lisa says, um, growing and glowing. Yes. Oh, I like that. That's good. Yeah. Well, so, I, and I, and I want to glow, right? To help yeah. other women who have gone through the same thing. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the pain is not in vain. There's a purpose. And I want to get to where I can use it for a purpose instead of yes. being stuck in it. Yes. And, and that's the thing. The, the story talks about being stuck. You were on the top of that mountain pass and that man showed up. Yeah. But he gave you the solution. It was the letter. Yeah. And that was the letter from yourself to yourself. Okay. Yeah. And so you, you have a solution here. Mm-hmm. Think yeah. about that. Imagine you're sick with a disease. You can get a diagnosis, but what's the treatment? If you have no treatment, you're still sick, right? Right. You've been given a solution in right. the story. That should encourage you. <laughs> <laughs> there's hope. <laughs> yes, there's hope. Yes. yes. Maybe I'll write a letter to myself. That would be a great idea. I highly recommend. You should write a letter to different ages. Yeah. You know, you can go, uh, little Jenny at age this, uh, this happened, or this hadn't happened yet, like age five. And so you can do that. So you can do multiple things at the same time. You can be spiritually in your garden, using your imagination, and your hearing in your heart. And yeah. you can write down what you're saying to her or to Jesus, you can write down what they say back to you in the yeah. conversation. And you can have a dialogue recorded in that conversation. And here's the thing, Jenny, anytime you have heavenly encounters, 
ask follow-up questions. Don't forget. Don't just have Jesus talk to you and you just walk away. You have to follow up and go, okay, Jesus or little Jenny, I heard you say this. What about blah, blah, blah? It's so important to ask follow-up questions in heavenly encounters, okay? And okay. so when you write down your letter, you have in your heart what you want to say. So you could start there, but then allow her to respond. Okay. Allow Jesus to chime in too. Okay. And that's an encounter that you can create. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, here's another thing. In other broadcasts, I don't know if you've seen, I'm going to ask a couple rhetorical questions to help you. Okay? Okay. All right. So are there dead people in heaven? Well, they're alive in heaven. They're, I mean, there's spirits up there. They're dead here, but not up there. But their their spirit man's still alive, right? They're in heaven. Right. right? Okay. Good. Right. Does the Bible say we're seated in heavenly places right now? Yeah. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so who's more powerful, Jesus or death? Jesus. So then, why we as Christians give more power and credit to death to go to heaven first? When I die, then I will go to heaven and I will experience heaven. Mm. But Jesus defeated death on the cross. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if we're already seated in heavenly places and we don't have to go to wait till we die to go there, but we can get there today. Oh. Think about that. And, and that he's more powerful than death. That means that we have access right now to all of heaven. And also, is Jesus and Father the only person in heaven? No. So is heaven a family? Oh, well, yeah. Very awesome. good. So how many churches are there in existence? I don't think God cares about churches. I'm not talking about denominations. I'm talking about his church. Is there a church on what? earth and a second church in heaven? Or is no. it just one? One. Right. So the Bible says that we're not supposed to talk to the dead, right? Well, if they're in heaven, they're not dead. Right. So your dad was a believer? Uh-huh. What if you asked Jesus to have you meet his dad, your dad? What if you were allowed that opportunity and say, Jesus, uh, is this the right time for me to meet my dad? Would you allow that conversation to happen? That would be cool. Yes, it would be very cool. Yeah. And so the thing is, what we don't realize as Christians is how valuably rich we are and what we have available to us. It is only us that limit ourselves to the resources of heaven. Either we don't know about it, or we don't believe, or, or we just are passive. Mm -hmm. So Jenny, you need to be a hero in your own story. You need to be a proactive hero. You're proactive with me getting all the orders set up and communicating. You can be just as proactive about accessing heaven. There are amazing places in heaven. There's the throne room, the glassy sea, the library heaven, the healing rooms, the courts of heaven, the court of wisdom. Uh, there are mountains and places to go and people to seeing things. You have the opportunity as a Christian to go because you're a daughter. You're, you're a child of his. And when you realize that you don't have to wait till you die, and that as a child, you have the full-on permission and right to access heaven. See, I'm giving you resources that are beyond human resources, that are really real, really practical. And, and so I want you to have the guts to go for it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because he is for you, and so is all of heaven. And you have access today. It's that simple. <laughs> And so also, I should take advantage of the access I have. You should take advantage of it. VIP pass and I don't do anything with it. That'd be right. Silly. I mean, I met a guy today who, who uh, was telling me about he had an encounter with the spirit of wisdom six months ago. Now, she said to him, finally, you've come to me. Mm. Solomon had a relationship with the spirit of wisdom in the book of Proverbs. It's a woman it's yeah. not, it's 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 a it's a female figure in heaven she is the wisdom encapsulated now i want to experience her too i have to make some decisions coming up i have to make some plans 
I am motivated myself. My wife and I, Alicia and I, are motivated to go meet with her in heaven to say, okay, we need, we don't have wisdom the way we need in this season. What are we going to do? But we're going to go get wisdom, right? Yeah. This right. is so practical. When you realize that heaven is so visual and practical yeah. and relational, it unlocks so many things for you. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm wanting, I'm trying to empower you by saying all mm -hmm. these things. Yes. I definitely feel encouraged and feel um, like I have, I have all these tools and it's time to pick up the tools and, and use yep. them instead yep. of letting them lay there. Yep. Very good. Perfect. It. Perfect. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy Idaho guy says, you make sure I always see the daylight. Oh, <laughs> it's a song. It's a good song. There you go. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. So how do you feel about tonight's experience? I, I definitely needed uh, the, this push, this like um, this message of hope that um i'm at the top of the mountain <laughs> i'm almost 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 to the medicine and um that you know i don't have to stay stuck right and, and i'm gonna get better and i'm gonna have a party and <laughs> well gonna... when you do have that party in that amazing dress i want to see a video of it okay get okay. back to me about that <laughs> like but i did it keep me in keep me in the loop <laughs> <laughs> okay Cool. Yeah, this is very, very encouraging. Good. I'm glad. I'm yeah. very glad. So we'll just wrap it up here, if that's okay. We're a little bit over an hour. It's been a wonderful conversation. Lots of revelation and insight that came out of it. Um, if you enjoy this broadcast and you stick all the way through to see this encouraging word, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Please make comments. Uh, please share this video with everybody that you see. Um, and if you want to order a story, go to legendsthewind.com and order a prophetic story. Now, Jenny, what would you say to someone who uh, has never heard of what we do? How would you describe it to them? And what would you say if you wanted to encourage them to get their own story? What would that be? Um, I would say it it's a life altering, encouraging word that will change your life forever if you apply it. And it's totally worth the investment um, to do it. Don't hesitate. Don't wonder, is this right for me? Is this the right time for me? Just do it now because you need, you need the encouragement now. Don't okay. wait. Great. Jenny, thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to meet you. It really is. I'm so Thanks. glad that this story worked out so well for you in our conversation. Yeah. Um, so in the month of August, we have several broadcasts on Mondays and on Thursdays. I know tonight's a Friday night because we had to reschedule. Uh, but in the, in the coming months, uh, I'm going to be doing uh, one show a week because I have to homeschool my daughter and uh, also do my own day job. And so I will try to work that out with everybody coming up as future guests. Uh, so you can find us at legendswin.com. You can also follow us on Facebook and our group, uh, at our page. And if you want to email me and reach out, I'm available at support at legendswin.com. Just uh, feel, I'd love to hear from you and hear about what you think about the show. So that's it, Jenny. You did it. You've, you. you've become a legend. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> cool. Well, guys, uh, Mike says that this was awesome. Thank you, Mike. That's great. Um, Jenny, uh, stick around uh, after the show. Uh, don't hang up, okay? And okay. Uh, we'll talk some more, okay? So, everyone, thanks for watching and sticking around with the show. I'm so glad you love the story. So glad of our conversation bringing hope and encouragement. We will see you on the next broadcast. Thanks, Jenny. Thank you. See ya.